Hey guys, Zengus, and today I'm going to give you a full review of the GoPro Hero 5 Session. So I'm going to be dividing this review up into four parts. So I'll be covering the specs, the battery life, the voice control, and also the design. So while I love using DSLRs, I also love using action cameras. And for a couple of years, I owned the GoPro Hero 4 Silver Edition, and it was absolutely fantastic. I've also been lucky enough for smaller brands to send me their versions of an action camera. So I've tested both GoPros and budget action cameras as well. So now let's take a look at the design of the GoPro Hero 5 Session. On the side, there's a small flap where you can access a USB-C port for charging and data transfer and also a micro SD card port. Then we also have a mode button and on the top we have a play button or a record button. I absolutely love the design of the Hero 5 Session. Not only is it small, but it's very light and extremely portable. I've dropped it a number of times on the floor and it is still just as durable as when I first used it. With a pocket sized design, I think it's really impressive that this camera can record 4K and I think the footage from it is okay. From years of experience with using action cameras, I think the best setup is recording at 1080p at 60fps. If any of you own a GoPro, you'll know that the camera has problems with saturation and also contrast as well. When I say problems, I mean that the footage can look very flat, However, looking at the GoPro Hero 6 footage, it seems like they have fixed it. In the GoPro Hero 5 session design, you'll also get better audio. And this is because you don't need a waterproof shell on top of the case. The actual case itself is waterproof, which I think is a really good idea. And I have noticed that the sound is clearer. But one of my favorite features about using a GoPro is just how wide the lens can go. So obviously when you're doing a lot of sports, say paintballing, you can really be in the action. And I absolutely love that. A lot of people don't like that effect, but I still absolutely love it. And of course you can actually turn it off. So now I'm going to give the, uh, the voice activation feature to go. Um, it is raining but it's fairly quiet um, and I've turned obviously the voice feature on so obviously we can try it now. GoPro take video. Okay GoPro record. Yeah didn't work. So um, it's likely that it didn't work because it's windy so I've gone to a bit where it's less windy. Uh, GoPro record. Didn't work. GoPro, take a photo. So you took a photo there, but didn't work for taking a video. GoPro, take a f take a video. And it just doesn't work. Really weird. GoPro, take a video. So I think the reason it wasn't working is because it was in photo mode. You can't just tell it to take a video while it's in photo mode, which is a bit silly. Um, but you can command it to change the modes. So, right now, uh, GoPro uh, photo mode. GoPro photo mode. GoPro change mode. Yeah, it's not very good. GoPro record. GoPro start video and now it's actually recording which I think is a bit lame but you know so this is what it looks like when you start recording I can tell it so to sum up the voice control on the GoPro it sucks I think in a lot of scenarios it could be great but in the real world it just doesn't work especially when you're using it in noisy conditions it is never going to work but you do also have the app so now let's talk about battery performance. I recently went paintballing for the full day and the total footage came to 43 minutes and 26 seconds on a full charge. So I can't say exactly how long the battery life was, but that is how much footage I managed to record in total. Throughout the day, I turned off any connection settings. So I turned off voice control and also Bluetooth as well. However, I was recording at double the standard frame rate. So that would explain why it was less battery life. Personally, I think 43 minutes of footage is absolutely fine because that was throughout about six hours of doing paintball. However, for some that might not be enough. Considering that the design is incredibly small, I have to credit GoPro for this because it's more than half the size of a standard GoPro and you can still get nearly an hour of footage. 
and that is at a high FPS. Of course, if you're recording on 4K, then you probably will get less footage, but considering it's almost pocket size, I'm happy with this. However, let's say you want to do a full day of skiing and you want to get lots of footage and you leave your GoPro on, then you'll find that you won't be recording for very long. If you are thinking about getting this GoPro for things like skiing, then I would definitely suggest that you get a GoPro Hero 4 because both you get better battery life and also the battery is removable so you can swap batteries in and out. So while the body of the GoPro Hero 5 session does have a USB-C port, you would think that the device would charge much quicker but I found to fully charge this takes around an hour and a half which I think is a little bit disappointing considering the battery is quite small. A feature that I would absolutely love to see in a future GoPro camera is wireless charging, but I think it will be a while till we get that. So while I think GoPro have done a great job in a lot of areas on this camera, there also are a lot of disappointing things. You may not have noticed, but actually when I was recording this review, the GoPro actually corrupted. And this is something that really annoys me because this is the exact same problem that I had on my Hero 4 Silver. So I'm starting to see a trend in GoPros where the device will just end up corrupting and that is incredibly annoying, especially when you're capturing a lot of footage. So since we've already looked at some videos recorded on this GoPro, let's take a look at some photos. So the first image that we're going to look at is an uncropped photo from the Eden Project. And the GoPro Hero 5 session takes photos at 10 megapixels. I wish it could be higher, but I think the photos look pretty good. I have to admit we were in an environment that had a lot of light, so that is why we have this really nice uh, vibrant shot. That being said, we were also in an area with about 70% humidity, so I have to definitely give credit to GoPro for making a lens that was really good at not fogging up because my DSLR lens fogged up straight away. So that was the only sort of camera that I could actually use in that environment, so props to GoPro for that. Now here is the second image, and as you can see, because it has infinity focus, everything is well focused. But that being said, it is a bit grainy, and also there are just no exciting colours. So I think that you do have to be in a well-lit situation to get some impressive images. Again, it's only 10 megapixels and it's quite a small sensor, so I'm not going to be expecting amazing photos. So if you take this GoPro to an environment with a lot of light, say the beach, then you are going to get some nice crisp photos. But if you're in a low light situation, then the camera will struggle. If you've never owned a GoPro before, then I think that this would be a fantastic first GoPro to have because the idea is that you have one single button and it is incredibly easy to use. When you press the single record button on the top, it will power on and start recording straight away. For the Christmas holidays, the GoPro Hero 5 has been reduced to £199, which I think is honestly really cheap. But... If you want to get this, then you need to think about what you want in it. If you need that extreme portability, then there is no better camera than the Hero 5. But if you want a slightly bigger camera that's cheaper, then I would highly recommend going for the Hero 4 or another camera. For me, I would place the GoPro Hero 5 right in the middle. It's definitely not a perfect action camera, nor is it a disappointing camera. The voice features are really disappointing, yet it has a really small design and can also record 4K. But at the same time, it could definitely have better battery life, but then again, it's cheaper than the other GoPros. So it's really down to you why you want it. If you want to go use it for vlogging or go in traveling, then sure, this will be a great GoPro and you won't be disappointed. But if you're expecting to use it for things like voice features or long recording sessions, then this isn't for you. GoPro definitely needs to work harder on sorting out the corruption feature because I've now found that same problem with two GoPros in a row and it actually puts me off using GoPros. GoPro shares are dramatically dropping and that's simply because the competition is getting better and better by the day. And I would definitely agree with that after using cheap budget cameras that can definitely match it. Overall, I'm going to give the Hero 5 session a 3 out of 5. So there is my full review of this GoPro camera. Of course, if you did find it helpful, then be sure to give it a thumbs up and thanks very much for watching.